Oh my god, there's a new Dainsleaf quest. I know I haven't made a video about lore in a very long time for this game, but every time there's a new Dainsleaf quest, I always get, like, excited about the lore again, because it's all about Conria and the Cataclysm, typically, and at this point, that's all I really care about in Genshin Impact. So, I'm here, I've come to Sumeru City, a place that I generally never every come- Zhongli? Zhongli, stop game. talking. I've come here to Sumeru City, where I normally don't come because I, uh, I don't like Sumeru, but <laughs> I guess I have to be here for Dainsleaf, so let's just go see what Catherine has to say for me. Ah, perfect. It's you two. I have a commission here that has your names written all over it. In fact, I'd even go so far as to say you're the only ones for the job. <laughs> this is exactly how we met Dainsleaf, too, you remember? With, uh, with Catherine? Now that I think about it, does every Dainsleaf quest start with talking to Catherine at the Adventurer's Guild? I know that the world quest where you meet him does, I know that We Will Be Reunited does, and now this one does. I don't remember the other ones. I don't remember how they started. The only ones for the job? Huh. If our help is really that important, it's probably some Archon class commission, right? <laughs> Which Archon do you need us to deal with today? <laughs> Which one are we killing? I'm sure Dainsleaf would love that. <laughs> the Adventurer's Guild doesn't employ that kind of classification system. In fact, this commission is also probably not nearly as intimidating as what you're expecting. All it asks us to do is to find a missing person. Oh my god, that's perfect because the whole game is about finding a missing person. <laughs> huh? Then why did you say we were the only ones for the job? I came across this commission while reviewing our backlog not too long ago. It seems simple. But our records indicate that over a dozen successive efforts to complete it have all ended in failure, despite attempts by several accomplished and renowned adventurers. With the reputation of the Adventurers Guild and the performance of the Sumeru branch at stake, it's in our best interest to assign this commission to the adventurer with the highest completion rate over the past few years. Well, that's us for sure! <laughs> All I'm asking is for you to give it your best shot. If it proves to be beyond your capabilities as well, I'll talk to the commissioner about canceling the commission. Okay, so who are we looking for? And what is it about this commission that's made it so hard to complete? This commission was jointly issued by the residents of Vimara Village. They say one of their own villagers has gone missing. But the problem is, they don't know the missing person's name. Wait, they can only that, provide okay. information about his general That appearance. makes no sense at all. They're saying somebody from Vimara Village has gone missing, and the people of the village have reported it. Yet they don't know the person's name, and they only know what he looks like. So, like, how do you even know he was from your village, then, if you don't even know the guy's name? Whatever. I'm not gonna question the writing of this game anymore, because if I keep doing it, then I'm gonna be here forever, because at this point, none of it makes sense. Uh... They're all from the same Thank village, you, but they don't even know his Thank name? You. Hmm. If so many adventurers have failed to complete this commission, maybe this missing villager doesn't exist at all. Could it be some sort of a prank or something? Unlikely. Several villagers came by to issue the commission, and judging by their appearance and tone of voice, they seemed incredibly sincere. It certainly didn't seem like a joke to them. Besides, Putting up a commission requires a processing fee. There aren't many upsides to a prank that costs Mora to carry out. In any case, it would probably be best to go to Vimara Village and ask around first. The Adventurous Guild does have some information on hand, but I would say anything you can learn directly from the villagers would be far more reliable. The best way to avoid misdirection is to go to the source. Alright then, let's go! Paimon's starting to get really curious about this whole thing. I can only guess where this is going. And the fact that it's named Bedtime Story makes me feel like... Okay, I didn't watch the trailer for this, I'm gonna be honest. So I can't really say anything of substance here. But the fact that it's called Bedtime Story makes me think that it's gonna be a similar thing to in Kari Bear, where the whole thing was a dream. Which, by the way, I, I really hate that. I hate that cop-out in writing that everything was just a dream so if this is that again i'm gonna be a little bit upset and by a little bit i mean kind of a lot upset 
We made it to Vamara Village! Why don't we talk to some of the villagers to learn a little bit more about the missing guy? If this commission is really as challenging as Catherine made it out to be, we're gonna need to carry out a very detailed investigation. As much as I dislike Sumeru, the music is my favorite in the whole game. I'm enjoying this. Hello there. You looking to buy something? I do- Oh, no, no. We're adventurers. Catherine sent us to look into a commission here in Vermara Village. Ah, so you hear about that then. Ah, you're not the first, that's for sure. We've certainly made a lot of trouble for you all. To be honest, we aren't holding out much hope. Many adventurers have made their way out here, confident they'd be able to help us, only to leave soon after with nothing to show for their efforts. We've pretty much had it up to here in questions, and the area around the village has practically been overturned in search of clues. But no one has been able to make any headway. So, this person we're looking for, what's his name? Where did he live? Does he have any relatives? Uh, I, I don't know. I really have no clue. I couldn't tell you. Okay, guess you are really sick of answering questions. I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to sound short with you. I was actually just giving you my answer to your questions. I know it may seem like we don't have anything to offer by way of information, but I promise you, we all have a very strong impression of him. When you live in the same village as someone, you develop a lot of memories together, you know? We just don't know the specifics. Maybe we did at one point, but that information is long gone This is now. so weird. He's saying that they all share memories because they live in the same town, but nobody knows his name, and now he's saying... Maybe we knew at one point, but that information is long gone now? At least that's what everyone in the village seems to think. We've all exchanged what we know, and that was the only logical conclusion. All right, specifics aside then, what kind of person was he? Young guy, in his early 20s probably. Incredibly kind sort of person, always willing to lend a helping hand. I'd chat with him when I didn't have any customers. I even saw him stick out his neck for others on more than one occasion. <laughs> now that you've started talking about him, you don't seem nearly as down in the dumps as you did before. Seems like he left a pretty good impression on you. But of course. Everyone in the village is pretty fond of him. We wouldn't have issued that commission otherwise. There aren't many young people like him nowadays. So genuine and pure. To think that he just up and disappeared one day... I just hope nothing bad I can happened. guarantee something bad happened. I know how this I know how this goes. <laughs> I know what happened. Could he have just moved away without telling anyone? No, he's not the type to leave without saying. How do you goodbye. know that? You don't know his name. And anyway, moving away without being seen by a single person in the village? Huh. Alright, thanks for Well that was a pointless conversation. I got nothing out of this. Alright, old guy, you better have some answers. It's that guests I hear. Hi, Grandpa Amadea. We're here to help you look for the guy that's gone missing. Ah, so that's what brings you to these parts. Coming all this way for our sake. That's so very kind of you. With your help, I... Could you tell us a bit about him? Of course. I'm happy to help any way I can. With my failing eyesight, I'm afraid I can't offer much about his appearance. I don't think his parents are still living in the village, but somehow he never seemed lonely. In fact, he was usually the one offering companionship to others. I'm just, I'm thinking. Why is this guy so weird, the way that they describe him? They don't know his name. This guy can't even tell you what he looks like. And, and yet, everybody has, like, a great impression of him. Is this guy- this isn't even a real person. That's- that's my new- that's my new guess. This isn't even a real person. This is somebody they all collectively dreamed about, and then that's why he disappeared for no reason, and doesn't have a name. <laughs> have you seen that meme where it's like, have you seen this man in your dreams? That's the guy they're talking about. He would often take time to visit the elderly, or play with the orphans in the village. And whenever someone had something on their mind, he was there Wait. to listen with open hold, ears. Hold on. He always knew just what to say. Now, I, okay, I was going to say, is this maybe Ether? 
and like it would change the dialogue based on what traveler you chose, but that's a bit of a stretch. And also, I don't think Ether would just be like living in Vimara Village. Ether has like bigger things to accomplish as Prince of the Abyss Order. As the village chief, I owe him many thanks. Helping villagers I feel like an navigate idiot because difficult I'm, like, moments in their lives anymore. should have been one of my responsibilities. But he was often the one rising to the occasion. Wow. He seems like such a nice and gentle person. No wonder his disappearance affected you all so much. But, um, you wouldn't happen to know any details about his name, address, or family situation, right? <sighs> I'm ashamed to admit it, but I just can't remember. No matter how you look at it, I should know those things. But for some reason, no matter how hard I try to remember, the information just doesn't come. Yeah, I, that Perhaps definitely makes me think really that this guy is not caught real. Up with me this time. Nobody can remember anything about him. The other guy said, maybe I knew at one point, but I must have forgotten. Ah, uh, it's okay. There's no need to force yourself to try and remember. We'll figure something out. Well, Traveler, what do you think? Um, yeah, a lot of things are not adding up, as many things in this game don't add up. I don't think so, too. Like, the name thing. It's so weird that no one remembers his name. Or anything about him. <laughs> and nobody has been able to tell us anything about his family or where he lived. It's like this guy's been erased from reality or something. He's someone who only exists in people's memories. Yeah, I guess that's kind of along the lines of what I've been saying. Wait, so you're saying it's not that he's been erased I was correct. necessarily, but more like he never existed I still to got it. with? I still got it! Was that a softball? Was that like an easy thing to predict? It definitely was. <laughs> okay, Paimon's gonna need some time to process that one. Someone who only exists in people's memories? Oh. Could it be like what happened with Greater Lord Rook Devada, like some sort of mass alteration of people's memories? I don't think this has anything to do with Ermensel. I don't think some guy just got erased from Ermensel because if that happened, they wouldn't be able to remember a single thing about him. They wouldn't bother reporting a missing person that never existed. I don't know. That's really weird. Was only his name erased from Ermensel? You two are the adventurers who just arrived, right? You're here for the Vimara Village Commission? I love this girl just snuck up on us so fast. Also, I'm I'm rocking with her outfit. I like the colors. Yep, sure are. We were just looking into the case. I'm so glad to hear that. Thank goodness you haven't given up. I've been so worried the Adventurer's Guild might cancel our commission. Prediction, is this girl also not real? <laughs> just the way she appeared was so bizarre. My name is Atosa, by the way. I grew up here in Vimara Village. Anyway, that I was just sort of like say, half of a joke. Please keep searching for a missing villager. I'm begging you. You have to find him. I'll try my best. Yeah, no need to worry. We'll give it our best shot. So, were you close to the missing villager? Are there any leads you can give us? Hmm. I'm not sure this counts as a lead, but follow me. There's a place I'd like to show you. That is so suspicious. She's just saying, follow me, lol. Like, what? Who are you, purple guy? What's going on? I'm- now I'm scared. Is this the place? Under this tree? Yep. I know it doesn't look like much, but this place is very meaningful to me. It's so full of memories. Because it's a tree? And like trees are Ermensel and Ermensel's memories. Okay, game. I see what you're doing. We used to always sit together under this tree and talk. Sometimes we would look up at the clouds in the sky or stop to feel the wind against our skin. We could sit there for hours at a time, never realizing how long it had been. I was actually adopted by the people of Vamar Village. The forest rangers found me in the woods as a child. I was surrounded by such good people, and growing up in the village was so lively. Alone? Uh, how 
should I put it? When something's bothering you, or when you have good news to share, you always want to talk about it with somebody. But for the longest time, I didn't know who I could talk to, or if I should say anything at all. Everyone has their own problems to deal with. Even if I might want to confide in others, I don't want to become a burden. <laughs> really? You know exactly how I feel? Dude, this is so sad. I used to have someone like that, a family member that I could talk to no matter what. And then, of course, you know, he joined the Abyss Order, and then I found him again, and then he left me again, and it's a whole ordeal. <laughs> Still looking for him. Aww. Hi, Mon, don't awe. This is a sad moment for Lumine. Wow, that sounds really nice. You're quite lucky. When it comes to our missing villager, well... Oh! I guess you could say that Okay, me, I noticed something like weird up in the tree, a family member and I, I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to seem stupid. Really understand me. Um, is this is that the memory of them that's inside the tree? That's her, and then that's the missing villager? Hey, uh, real quick, blue hair. Blue hair! Who has blue hair and is related to, to Conria and Dainsley tangentially? Kaya Genshin Impact. And he was in Sumeru in the last Dainsley quest. I'm not saying this is Kai against an impact, but I'm just throwing it out there. And maybe it's somebody he's related to. No matter what came my way, I knew I could always talk to him. He was so thoughtful and pure and patient too. Whenever I talked to him, he would always seem so interested ever since he disappeared. There's been so much I wanted to tell him. No, no, none of those things matters now. I just really want to see him again. None of those things matters now. That's not correct grammar. Wow, you two must have been really close. Did he ever tell you anything about himself? Hmm. He mostly just talked about interesting things he saw around the village. He'd share a lot of his own wild ideas as well. Oh, right. I did ask him about his parents once. But all he said was, they're not here anymore. Yeah, this is this is giving big somebody from the Alberic clan vibes. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting big founders of the Abyss Order vibes. I didn't know whether that meant they had left the village or passed away, and I didn't want to pry. Hmm. Still not much to go off of. Uh, look at me. Talking your ear off and still nothing to show for it. I'm sorry I wasn't more help. Miss Girl, your tree has helped me more than you will ever know. The last time I talked this much in one go was when we were still together. Huh, come to think of it, every time we talked it always seemed to be around dusk. Just like right now. Time always passed by really slowly. Even when it felt like we'd been oh. talking for hours, the sun would still be at the same position in that, the sky. Um, that's weird. Okay, I don't even know where to begin with that one. T time stopped? Is that, a, is that a new thing that Erminsel can do? Stop time? Okay. Well, time always seems to pass slower when you're relaxed, right? Uh, what's wrong, Traveler? I don't think a more obvious sentence has ever been uttered. Based on what we've learned, this is definitely not a regular missing persons case. Thank you, Lumine. Astute observation. What Atosa just told us about the time could be the key to unraveling this whole mystery. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> I just don't know exactly what's what to say about the time being stopped like that. Has there ever been anything like that in the game before? I'm trying to think of anything. There have definitely been moments where we've gone back in time. Thematically relevant. <laughs> hey, look at those hilly trails over there. Doesn't it seem like they're acting a little strange? Um, hilly trails getting upset? No, that's not strange. With an abyss mage? That's a little odd. Uh, Dude! Could they be the ones behind all of this? Is the abyss order, like, causing a mass hallucination for these people? <laughs> is that what that is? Are they the ones stopping time? I mean, I'm just saying, Conrians, their whole thing was like achieving 
power that like not even gods could. They were they were so crazy. If they figured out how to stop time, everyone is screwed. Uh oh, we've been spotted! Quick, get ready to fight! Well, I wish I had a hydro in my party right now. Are you guys proud of me? I finally uh, built my Arlequino. Thank you so much. I wasn't expecting monsters to show up. If you hadn't been here, I'm not sure what I would have done. Died, probably. It was no trouble. Yeah, what is the Abyss Order doing around here? <laughs> hmm, now that I think about it, the hilly trolls around Rumara Village have been a lot more active lately. They seem agitated and would often attack anything in sight. Chief Amadea doesn't allow the children to play in the area around the village anymore. Hmm. Maybe the Abyss Order really is involved. I mean, obviously, this is a Dane's Leaf quest. Well, we should head back and check out the situation in Vimara Village just in case. If the Abyss Order is plotting something, that could spell trouble for the villagers. Well, now you got me interested. You say Abyss Order and, my, you know, my ears perk up. Wait a second. <gasps> it's Dane's Leaf! Yes! Oh my god, Dane's Leaf? I've been dying to see him for, like, over a year at this point. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Hey, Pookie! I love this guy. Hello, my uh, favorite unreliable narrator. He makes it, like, almost impossible for me to formulate theories on this game sometimes, because a lot of the information he provides is contradictory to other things, and sometimes even his own words. So, I feel like I can't really trust anything he says, but at the same time, I really like him. I have a complicated relationship with Thane's Leaf. He's like my friend of me, slash lover. Oh, a friend of yours? Well, I'll leave you all to it then. I should head back to the village and check up on Chief Amadea and the Why others Why do I have anyway? a bad feeling about this girl? Oh, Why am I, like, afraid she's gonna die or, like, be gravely endangered? Yep. Just the see you later implies that we will, in fact, see her later. And with the Abyss Order and Dane's Leaf around, I mean, later cannot be good. Why do you always have to pop up out of nowhere like that? <laughs> Is it your life's mission to jump scare us or something? Probably. I mean, he's kind of a freak. It's hardly personal. Or intentional, for that matter. As long as you and I are both in pursuit of the Abyss Order, we're bound to cross paths. So you're here to investigate the Abyss Order, then. That would explain the monsters you were fighting just now. Naturally. Hold on. Are you not here for the same purpose? We ran into them on accident. Hmm. No matter. It may have taken you a while to catch on, but I'm sure you've also realized by now that there's something strange about this place. I'm gonna go ahead and argue that there's something strange about Sumeru in general, now that we know that Conria is directly below Sumeru. We learned that in the last Saints Leaf quest, which is something I disagree with, by the way. I think it should be below Mondstadt. But anyway, canonically, it's below Sumeru. So, of course, it makes sense for things like this to be happening in Sumeru. The Abyss Order is most certainly planning something in this area. Or worse. Their plan could already be in motion. So you think the Abyss Order is behind the hilly trail activity in the area? As things stand, I highly doubt that is their primary motive. I would imagine the increased hilly trail activity is merely a byproduct of whatever it is they're really trying to accomplish. Still, the hilly trail activity is causing a lot of problems for the people here. We should stick around for a while and protect the village, don't you think? No, I'd rather go out and investigate Paimon. Come on, don't be boring. The best way to protect them is by Thank figuring out what the Abyss is Order is him. truly planning. That is how we prevent further tragedy. Yes, this is so true. And after that, you also owe us many answers. I want all of my questions answered by Dainsleaf. Every single one. I have about, um, I'm gonna just ballpark it, 10 million for him. <laughs> and you shall have them. I never intended to hide anything from Dane's you. Leaf, that's that's a lie right there that you never intended to hide anything from me. First field tiller's eye. Where is it, Dane's Leaf? What'd you do with it? I'm still on that. I'm still stuck on that after years. 
I'm still mad about the fact that they've never brought it up again. Don't worry. There should be ample time to talk. Bainsleaf, I don't trust you, but I love you. <laughs> I told you I have a complicated relationship with this guy. Ah. So that was the commission that brought you here to Vimara Village. Someone who seems to only exist in people's memories. That is indeed quite intriguing. I would agree that it's unlikely you have a simple missing persons case on your hands. However, any possible connection to the Abyss Order is still unclear. I disagree. Blue-haired child. <laughs> that is maybe the most, like, loose piece of evidence I could come up with. And it's also the only thing. It appears all we have by way of clues is increased hilly churl activity. And that is certainly not much to go off How of. about the intel you promised me? Or do you not want to share it, Dainsleaf? Right! That mysterious voice she heard in her brother's I was memory. just thinking about the this! Himself a sinner. Who is he? That, okay. When I was talking about how Conria is directly below Samaru, and I was thinking about the, the Alberix and the formation of the Abyss Order, I was thinking about the sinner, like that statue that we saw in Kari Bear. Where is that in Samaru? Because it's obviously somewhere in this country. I think the sinner, whoever that is, is affecting this area, clearly. Hmm. Traveler, let me ask you this. Do you believe your sibling to have betrayed Absolutely. You? In a manner of speaking, yeah. Definitely, yes. Hmm. I sense hesitation in your words. After all, you still haven't figured out the whole truth of what happened. I mean, I have an idea. <laughs> I have an idea of what occurred. There's still hope for the two of you to reconcile. Irreparable damage has not yet been That's done. That's true. The original quest was called We Will Be Reunited, not We Will Not Be Reunited. The sinner you wish to know about. His fellow situation sinners? Is different. He and his fellow sinners have long betrayed me, and long betrayed their nation. Gainsleaf? Okay, he always confuses me with this. He's so patriotic about Conria. And then he's anti-Abyss Order, which the whole point of the Abyss Order was to, like, basically avenge Conria, so you would think that he would like them. But he doesn't. Is that what- is that the betrayal? Does he think that the Abyss Order's existence is, like, an affront to Conria's original values? His name is Vedderfolnir. The Visionary. I'm loath to admit it. Ooh! He is also my kin. My older brother. This is interesting. I like this. Okay, Nancy, keep talking. Your brother? What really happened in Conria back then? There were five of them. The five sinners of If Conria. you could see my face right now, what? The 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 five what now of Conria? The the what now? I'm gonna go ahead and guess that Rhine Dotir or Gold, she was one of them. The wise Ropt. I was right! The visionary, Vedafonir. Gold, Rhine Daughter, the Foul, Sertologi, and Rehir of Solnari, Rerir. Okay. I mean, I love that I was correct about um, Rhine Daughter being one of the um, being one of the five sinners of Conria. What were they called that in Conria? Because I thought these people were like revered and really well liked in their society because they were so smart and so innovative. No matter how eroded my memory may become, I will never forget their names. One day, I shall have my vengeance. Pain sleep. Also, the, the line, no matter how eroded my memory may become, that, to me, makes me think that he knows it's already happened. Or, like, is happening currently. Which is another reason why I don't think I should trust Dainsley for what he says, because how is he supposed to remember everything correctly? Dainsleaf is not like an immortal god who can handle it. Like, Dainsleaf is still, at the end of the day, a human w who was cursed with immortality. Wait, some of those names sound really familiar. Rhine Daughter is the one who created Albedo. Sertologi is Skirk's master. I forgot about that. I was like, I definitely recognize that name, but I don't remember from where. And also, the Fowl is so interesting. So the foul legacy thing that Child has, that he learned from Skirk, is originally from Conria. And the one we just learned about, Dane's brother, Vedafolnir. 
If he was the voice of the sinner, then the one who inspired Clotar to create the Abyss Order Bruh! was him. That's crazy. Okay. I guess that makes a little bit more sense for why Dainsley doesn't like the Abyss Order. Then he has like personal problems with it. But I still don't understand why he's so anti their values. If that's true, then the stone slates we found in that ruin in Fontaine, the ones that outline Fontaine's prophecy, that was likely better Fulnir's doing as well. They were once people of great esteem in Conria. Those who carried the hopes of the Wait, nation. Wait, Tinsley, stop. I have to say something. They were the best of their peers. <laughs> Outstanding in their respective fields. So, if Dainsleaf's brother is responsible for the stone slates that had the Fontanian prophecy on it, does that mean that they were like planting this idea in people's heads that they were like, Archon's gonna die, you're all gonna die, everything's gonna suck, <laughs> the whole country's getting drowned? Um, Abyss Order? That's mean. My god, they're like terrorizing. <laughs> they're terrorizing the people of Tevat. They're terrorizing the people who believe in the Archons. That's not so unlike the Abyss Order or anything. I just think that that particular incident is kind of egregious. Six of us. Together. We should have been the ones to prevent the disaster. The ones to stop the Vinster King from That's King continuing Ermin, I guess. to rock the foundation of the world. Yet, deep within... The five of them craved something more. They could not resist the call of the Abyss and divided among themselves a power that could destroy the world. This is just like the Horcruxes. <laughs> Sorry, that's so stupid. So they became sinners, but also transcendent beings, each in possession of world-shattering power. Dainsleep, I need you to elaborate on what this world-shattering power is. And when the cataclysm occurred, not one oh! of them stood up in defense of their That's nation. That's why he doesn't like not them. Not one okay, that, came I get forward it now. to prevent the tragedy. And for that, they shall never have my forgiveness. That makes a lot more sense, Dainsleep. Thank you for telling me that. That's crazy to me that the people of Conria who were, like, the most respected in the society, who did the most for the country, when it came down to it during the Cataclysm, they just like effed off and did their own thing and let everyone die. That's so crazy. Anyway, my sibling came into contact with your brother. Indeed. If they are not stopped, the day is sure to come when they will also betray the entire world. Thank you for telling me. This is actually like, seriously, Dainsley, thank you for telling me. I'm, I'm not thanking you as Lumine. I'm thanking you as me, real life me. <laughs> Of course. As I said, I never intended to hide but anything But see, now he's you. making me think that I can trust him again. I don't know, Dainsleaf. I gotta have, like, some level of skepticism. So, Dane, what have you been looking into all this time? I've continued to investigate the questions surrounding the Loom of Fate. <gasps> it's been quite this is some what I was time talking about earlier with the field tiller's eye. Yes! The Loom of Fate operation was the Abyss Order's thing where they were going to make a mechanized god out of a Sile's body and, um, like, ruin machine parts. By retrieving oh my god! the eye of the first yes! field tiller, we were able to stop part of their plan from coming to Oh, you were finally listening to me. I complained so much about them never bringing this up again that they were finally like, we gotta talk about it. <laughs> oh, Paimon remembers! Weren't they going to use it to corrupt Osile and make a god or something? Indeed. However, it's obvious that was just some sort of technical experiment. Yeah, Osile's not big enough for them. They would never care about such a loser. Sorry, Osile. I really like him. The eye was integral to their plan, yet somehow, despite failing to obtain it, They've skipped the experimental phase and found some other way to keep moving So this forward. implies that Dainsleaf is still in possession of it. Or he destroyed it. I doubt he would do that. There are many signs pointing to that effect. Then what should we do? It's not too late, is it? Our most pressing concern is to determine the purpose of the Loom of Fate. From there... We'll be able to deduce the Abyss Order's true objective. Is the Abyss Order's true objective not, like, clear? 
I mean, this might be stupid of me to say this now because, like, watch me be wrong in a couple years when it inevitably comes out that it's something different. But I always thought the Abyss Order's goal was to mess with the people of Tevath and eventually avenge Conria by attacking Celestia. And that's why they need this mechanized god. Based on the intel I've gathered so far, I suspect the Loom of Fate is related to the ley lines. And then that's why the time stops. Okay, I get it. The ley lines? Traveler, you were able to observe your siblings' memories last time, yes? I believe that was due to the fact that the ley lines in that area were unstable. My recent investigation has shown that Abyss Order activity in a particular area is usually- Wait! Then our commission here in Vimara Village, the person who seems to exist only in people's memories, could it be connected? Memories, ley lines, the loom of fate, the missing person that doesn't seem to exist. What's the connection between all this? It's certainly possible. The Abyss Order. <laughs> I'll join your investigation tomorrow. This missing persons case could very well turn out to be the key to unraveling these mysteries. Well, if we're teaming up with Dane again, we're gonna need all the energy we can get. <laughs> Let's try investigating somewhere a little further away tomorrow. Okay. Well, that was an interesting conversation. See, this is the kind of lore I've been waiting for, Genshin. Thank you. I've been dying to get this kind of stuff. Tired. That was the most insane I yawn I've ever way heard. Too much brain juice yesterday. It's all Dane's fault. <laughs> saying all that complicated That's stuff. That's true. Blame it on Dane's sleep. <laughs> I didn't sleep well either. Well, let's go find Dane. We've got a lot to do today. Yes, we do. Let's go. Let's go get him. Come on, Dane's sleep. The name of this quest is interesting. Memories that should not exist. Not memories that don't exist. Memories that should not exist. Says who? Uh, Dane? Hello, Dane? Why are you just zoning out over here? Uh. He's relaxing, he's chilling. Did something happen? What's wrong? The missing person from your commission. Could you describe them? Is it me? like his brother or something is the missing person all this time and he was messing with the people of Vimara Village? Oh, uh, young guy, early 20s? Seriously, Dane, what's going on? There appear to be certain memories oh. in my mind that weren't there before. That's weird. Dane's like, we gotta get you out of this town. Memories of him. I. Uh, Maybe, maybe we just talked too much about him yesterday and you had a weird dream or something? No, it wasn't a dream. They're memories. Memories that suddenly appeared in my mind after I woke up. And I'm certain I've never met this person before. What exactly did you remember? I remember handing him the eye of the first field tiller. Okay, 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 okay. I think this might be a real memory. I think this might be a real memory that was just awakened for some reason. Because I remember saying so long ago, years ago, in one of my like first Genshin theories I ever did, that I think Dainsleaf gave the first Field Tiller's eye to somebody. And now here he is saying that he remembers handing the eye of the first Field Tiller to this guy. What? Okay, so this missing person definitely has something to do with the Abyss Order then. I think that actually happened. Because even now, like, we, he still didn't tell us what he did with the first Field Tiller's eye. He was- he just said that they didn't get it in the last conversation, but now he's saying he remembers giving it to somebody? This is what I mean when I say you can't trust Ainsley. I know his memories have been screwed with, but still. And it still. appears he possesses the ability to implant memories into the minds of others. Alternatively, this is a way to maybe force Stainsleaf into the Abyss Order by brainwashing him into thinking that he already is in the Abyss Order. Wait then. All the memories the villagers have of him, could they be fake too? Maybe they never knew him at all. But why would he do something like that? To brainwash them into joining the Abyss Order, like I just said. 
Whatever the Abyss Order is planning, an important truth has been revealed to us this morning. What sort of truth? That their goal is still to obtain the Eye of the First Field I'm so Field glad Tiller. we're back on this. They haven't stopped searching Like, I'm for so it. happy that we're back on the First Field Tiller's Eye. I'm so happy about it. I am the only person who knows its location. Perhaps implanting that particular memory was an attempt to interfere with my mind This is what way. I just said. What if that memory is real? Your concerns are not entirely unfounded. I don't believe the Abyss Order is capable of altering reality like that just, just yet. yet. So he thinks they will be eventually. That's alarming. However, considering their single-minded pursuit of the Eye, I would see an equal level of caution is in order on our part. I don't know why Dainsleaf wouldn't just keep the Eye on him at all times at this point. Or just destroy it! Come with me. We must check whether the eye is still in of our Of course possession. he, like, he put it somewhere, and it's not gonna oh, be there. so you're going to take us to where you hit it? What if someone follows us? If we go straight there and someone is on our tail, aren't we just exposing the eye's location? Maybe that's the reason the Abyss Order implanted that memory in the first place, to force Dain to confirm the eye's lo- Oh my god. To force Dain to confirm the eye's location. Hmm. Given what I know of him, though, I'm sure Dane has already thought of that possibility. It seems like he might already have a plan. Let's go. Of course. <sighs> These quests stress me out. So you hit it way out here? Not an easy place to discover, that's for sure. Well, let's go check to see if it's safe. I have a feeling it's super not there. <laughs> I have a feeling we're gonna go in there and the eye is gonna be gone. Traveler, wait. Mmm, Dainsleaf, why don't you want me to go get the eye? Something is suspicious about this. <sighs> uh oh. That's not good. We've no time to lose. Let's head inside. What was Dane going to tell me just now? I have a feeling he just got memory wiped, whatever he was gonna say. It's not in his head anymore. Hey, wait! So cool. So Conria. I love it. Oh, is this not gonna be a domain? No, it definitely is. <gasps> this is exciting. I can only imagine what's going on in here. <laughs> I really have no idea what I'm in for. Scary as always. Gather! Illusion shattered! Overrule! Yeah. The mechanisms here have changed over time. You can access the upper floor through the side door. Perhaps you should try reactivating the mechanism over there. The mechanisms here have changed over time. That's odd. Why would they do that? Someone has clearly been here and messed with it. Who is not Dainsleep. What I'm trying to say is somebody has the eye and it's not Dainsleep. There it is. Hello, Ruin Guard. Should I say Field Tiller? Conria joke. Watch out! Coming at ya! Hiya! And ha! Ha! Ha ha! Ha!
I'm scared. I'm so scared right now. This game doesn't know what it does to me with, with my anxiety. Make sure all the runes are pointing in the direction indicated by the light. That should unlock the mechanism. The door's open. Let's go. Our destination is just up ahead. Also, like, what is this place that Dainsley knows about? I mean, is this not clearly Conry in ruins? Obviously it has to be, right? And I'm just like, what was this before it was ruins? Like all the statues around it looks almost like a temple, but of course, Conrians were non-religious. <sighs> At least in the traditional sense, they were non-religious. Looks like we can't go any further. Be on your guard. I sense the presence of the Abyss. It's the Abyss Order! They're here! Well, of course they're here. I love how chill Dainsley looked at that. He was just like, yeah, this is regular. I will have order. Stabilize! Stay there! Stay there! There is no escape! Transfixed! This is where we're going. Huh. Laid bare. Just as I suspected. The false memories were a trap. The Abyss Order just wanted to follow us here. If you suspected that, then why did you do it, Dainsleaf? See, this is why I don't trust him. He does stuff like this. I still love him, though. Maybe he's just having a bad day. Now that they're in the vicinity, we should have a chance to see. Oh my god. See, I was just complaining about him, but at the same time, I love him and I don't want to see him in pain. Dainsleaf, what's wrong, baby girl? Dane? What's wrong? <sighs> Can you feel that? There's been a disturbance in the ley lines. It must be the work of the Abyss. Wow, you must be really sensitive to that sort of thing. Byman doesn't feel it. Mm, then is it actually happening, or is he just making it up? You two, do as I say. Use that mechanism over there and leave this place. Actually, I could also see that maybe he is more connected to ley lines and Ermin's soul because of the curse. Anyway, leave you here on your own, will you be alright? The Abyss Order is putting something in motion. If you return to Vimara Village, I suspect you might finally have the opportunity to locate the missing villager. Just think of it as a way to divide and conquer. Alright. Stay safe, Dainsleaf. Love you. Kisses. Dane does have a point, but something still feels off. What am I missing? The eye. That's what we're missing. Still haven't seen it. Is this his brother coming? POV, your better full mirror? <laughs> I hope I remembered his name correctly. It's gonna be so embarrassing if I didn't. Ether! Wow! <laughs> I knew going along with your trap would be the only way to meet with you face to face. Hello! Alright! I mean, I was definitely expecting to see Ether in this quest because of the promo art. I just wasn't really sure when. This is you risked your safety, and that of the Eye, 
He said you risked your safety and that of the eye, like they're working together. I've been saying this from the beginning! That's quite the gamble, Dainsliff. But I believe that I am the one walking into a trap laid by the Twilight Sword. So you came here all on your own? What about those followers of yours? When the Twilight Sword is prepared for battle, any army I could send would only be marching to their doom. Better that I face you alone. Oh man. Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. So Dainsleaf's brother sent Aether to go fight Dainsleaf. That's crazy, that's kind of sad. Know you must have a lot to say. But if it's a conversation you want, you'll have to defeat me first. Get him, Dainsleaf. I believe in you. You can do this. He's not gonna want to fight him. And we'll never know what happened in there. Alright, alright folks, do you think Dainsleaf actually fought Ether? The disorder's on the move! The ley lines are all out of whack! We better hurry back to Vimara Village and see what's going on! Hey! Look at those hilly trails over there! They seem strangely calm. Weren't they acting super agitated just a little while ago? Why are they so calm all of a sudden? I hear something. In the new world, they bade farewell to the Shrouded Sun. Whose voice is this? That's not- is that Aether? I can't tell, really. At last, they no longer needed to dwell on their suffering, or try to differentiate between various thoughts of blasphemy. Such was the price they paid, and thus their souls became cleansed and pure. Is this like the Abyss Order's goal? Because this does not sound like something that has actually happened yet. They bade farewell to the Shrouded Sun, they no longer needed to dwell on their suffering or try to differentiate between various thoughts of blasphemy. Their souls became cleansed and pure. That seems like something that is something they want in the future, especially the try to differentiate between various thoughts of blasphemy thing. That feels like very in line with arguing over who is at fault for the cataclysm to me. Uh, did you hear that? What was that sound just now? It was someone's voice. It sounded so gentle. Could that voice be comforting the hilly trills in some way? Oh, this is weird. Let's check if this is happening anywhere else. Yeah, and you can't fight these guys. Okay, I mean, I didn't want to, really. I was just more curious than anything. I swear I'm not trying to commit crimes. Really, trails are people, too. Looks like the same thing is happening over here, too. The heli trails are calm. You see, we're both still here. Whose voice is this? This is not Dainsleaf's brother. He had a deeper voice than that. I definitely remember that. I can't tell if this is Ether's voice or not, but I can imagine that he would probably say this stuff, and saying, we're both still here, makes me think he's talking to me, the Traveler. We've reclaimed an endless amount of time to love. Oh, or is this the voice of the falsely implanted memories of that guy from Vimara Village? Release your tears. You no longer need to hold back your sorrow. I gotta stop jumping to conclusions and just let the quest play out. Although most of the conclusions I've jumped to so far have been super correct. Anyway, it's that voice again. <laughs> Over there, it looks like they're sleeping. In the end, he whispered softly, Sleep well, father. Sleep well, 
my beloved people. What? I don't even know where to begin with this one. I'm just gonna move on. I'm just gonna file this one away for later. When you awake, that which differentiates us shall be no more. Well, that's even more confusing. <laughs> I'm gonna have to think about this one. I don't think I can formulate a theory off the top of my head with this one like I could with some other stuff in this quest. It almost sounds like a poem or some kind of story. Well, now that the hilly trolls have calmed down, Vimara Village should be safe at least. Let's put this situation to the side for now. Dane said this might be our chance to find the missing villager, so we should head back to Vimara Village before it's too late. Grandpa Amadea, is everyone all right? The Abyss Order seems to be up to something nearby. The Abyss Order? This is the first I'm hearing of it. You've never heard of the Abyss Order? Or does he just mean the Abyss Order being here? I hope he that's what he means. And I hope that he doesn't mean that he's never heard of the Abyss Order. Because it's not like there's some secret. Like, even back in Mondstadt with the Knights of Favonius, they talked about the Abyss Order being a threat. So people know that they exist. Uh, thank you for your concern. But as far as I'm aware, it's been business as usual here in the village. Well, that's good to hear. Oh, also, you didn't happen to come across any clues about the missing villager while we were gone, did you? Hmm? Someone's gone missing, what? you say? Who would that be? <laughs> they just gave up on this... this simulation. Okay. Huh? Things just got even more complicated, you're telling me. You know, the young guy from Vimara Village! The one you've been looking for all this time? You posted a commission with the Sumeru Adventurers Guild. That's kind of the whole reason we're here, actually. Your missing persons commission. Ah, I do apologize, you two. I hope I'm not worrying you too much. I'm sure it's just my age making me forgetful again. Mm-hmm. At least right now, I can't seem to recall whatever it is you're referring to. But oh my god. This is so inconvenient. All right. Thanks for your help, Grandpa Amadea. This order, stop messing with me. Stop messing with these people. Something this is psychological warfare. not right. We just talked to Grandpa Amadea about the missing villager. There's no way he could have forgotten all about him just like that. I think there super is. I think you can forget about a person who never existed. What do you think, Traveler? Could everyone's memories of the missing villager have been erased again? We should check in with the others first. You're right. We should narrow down the possibilities first. Let's go ask someone else then. Someone's gone missing? Who? Your mom. Sorry, I could not resist. Uh, just as expected. Um, that guy you said a bunch of nice things about earlier? The one you always used to chat with? He's around 20 years old, and you said he was a kind, warm-hearted person? Oh, I know who you're talking about. Really? You remember? There aren't many young people who've earned that kind of praise from me. If you're certain that's what I said, then there's only one person who fits the bill. No doubt about it. But why'd you say he's gone missing? Have you seen him recently? Yeah, I just saw him leave the village. There was someone else with him, too. They couldn't have gone far. Strange. Bayram seems to remember him, and apparently he just saw him? Do you think maybe it's not that there's something wrong with people's memories, Whoa. but that we've somehow returned to a time before he went missing? Huh. I mean, um... I would hope not, because that would complicate things a lot more, but at the same time, that is what happened in the last Dainsley quest. We used memories to kind of go back in time in a way, so... Maybe. I doubt returning to the past would be that simple. Yeah, I agree. Given everything Dane mentioned about disturbances with the ley lines, I'd say it's far more likely this is related to memories in some way. I need to think carefully. What's really going on? All right. People have forgotten about the missing person. Just like what happened with Greater Lord Rukadevata, no one remembers him because there's been a change in people's memories. We've returned to a point before the disappearance took place. If we really did travel back to a time before he disappeared, that could explain why the villagers said he hadn't gone missing. But I don't think that's what happened. 
This is what I think happened. We are presently traversing someone's memories. If this person only exists in people's memories, maybe we're in someone's memory right now. Are we perhaps in Ether's memory again? Like in the last Dainsleaf quest? I just thought it was interesting when Ether came into that scene with just Dainsleaf. It was like from his POV, like we were him. I'm gonna submit this as my conclusion. Right! Paimon totally forgot about the Leyline disturbances. We're in someone else's memory. Just like how you entered your sibling's memory last time. Exactly what I just said. See? I- Dude, this game is so predictable. That would also explain why we seem to be at a time before he went missing. It's a memory after all. And this is our chance to find him. Right. If he's someone who only exists in people's memories, then we're finally on the same turf. But didn't Bayron just say that he saw him leave the village with someone? With that girl. Where should we go look for him? That tree. Who knows how long this ley line to I'm on. I'm on. I know exactly what to do. Down. We pretty much figured out that the missing villager has the ability to... Implant memories into the minds of others. Right! That! Can we try to figure out more about him using what we know of his ability? That's a good idea. Like, does it maybe leave a trace that would somehow give him away? Rare good idea from Paimon. <laughs> Implanting memories into the minds of others must be an imperfect process. There's no way the new memories could perfectly blend in with the old ones. There has to be some kind of tell. Scenes from false memories will not change. All the memories seem to be set in or near Vimara Village. <sighs> but I'm still not sure if they're restricted to this location. Time does not pass within false memories. Yeah, this, I think, stands out the most. If time was allowed to pass within the false memories, there's a higher chance they might conflict with someone's original recollection. That would make it much harder to avoid suspicion. False memories are easily forgotten. There's a difference between memories that arise from lived experiences and those that are implanted into the mind. Perhaps it has something to do with time. Um, I mean, I don't want to submit the wrong conclusion because that'll be embarrassing, but I'm going to do this one. No wonder! I was right! All this time and the sky hasn't changed a bit! That must mean time isn't passing! That's the tell of the fake memories! The implanted memories are basically taking place outside of the regular 24 hours of the day. If the memories included the regular passage of time, it would be easy for people to tell that something was off. Like there could be overlap or something. People might start to wonder why they remember doing two different things at the same time of day. Paimon. Paimon is really smart in this one. That's why he makes sure the memories take place at a specific moment in time rather than over a period of time. If we consider this in conjunction with what we already know, then the question of whose memory this is seems to have an obvious answer. Atosa, Dainsley for Amadea. It has to be Dainsleaf. I mean, ugh. I don't want to say it's Amadea because we saw him in his own memory. That wouldn't make any sense. Dainsleaf? Is that maybe too easy of an answer? I feel like a toast is also kind of an easy answer. I don't know. Let me interpret these and see what, what comes up. The color of the sky coincides with the moment in time she described. But maybe he used that time for all of the implanted memories. Dainsleaf had memories implanted into his mind. Could it be that it's happened more than once? I want to pick Dainsleaf. We thought Chief Amadea forgot about the missing villager. But it turns out, we're at a moment in time before the village issued the commission. As much as I want to say it's Dainsleaf, it's probably Atosa. Oh, right! Yep. That's exactly what Atosa described! I was right. Oh, come to think of it, every time we talked, it always seemed to be around dusk. Just like right now. Time always passed by really slowly. I don't need this Even flashback. I just like lived it like an hour ago hours, in real life. The sun <laughs> I didn't forget. That has to be it. This is definitely Atosa's memory. Let's go to the tree. Yeah, that's where they'll be. I already said this like a while ago. I can't believe I just had to sit through that whole sequence just to figure this out. I already know what's going on. Wait. Oh, I wanted to get the camera out and zoom into this guy so I could make some comments. That is definitely a blue-haired person wearing 
I mean, I can't tell from this distance, but that appears to be, like, Conrian-style clothing. So, you see, Granny Jahiet was a mercenary when she was younger. She just talks like that out of habit. She's not trying to scare the children on purpose. Oh, there I go again. Always talking about my own things. Do you, maybe, have anything you want to share? Um, it's okay if you don't. You... you could also just... talk about what you think of me? Girl, do not get involved with a Conrian. <laughs> I know this because I'm involved with Dainsleaf and it sucks. <laughs> Oh, I, uh, I, I think you're an incredibly strong and thoughtful young woman. You'll meet many amazing people and live a very happy life. You won't miss someone like me. So, he's in the Abyss Order, clearly. Huh? Are those your friends over there? We finally found him, but why does he look kind of familiar? He looks like Kaya. He looks related to Kaya, doesn't he? All oh, right. This version of Atosa hasn't met us yet. Friends? I guess you could say that. It must have taken them a lot of effort to find me. What? So, I should see what they need. I'm oh, sorry, he's, Atosa. He's bluffing. We'll have okay. to continue this I conversation understand. another time. Another time, huh? Um, yeah, okay. I'll head back to the village then. Talk to you some other time. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. It's nice to see you, Traveler. I believe this is the first time we've met. I don't like that he knows my name already. Your... Oh, <gasps> that's... Dude, that's... Is that... Is that... Is that the... The Hillichurl from the last quest? Factoring in the memories, the Abyss Order, the Loom of Fate, and everything else, I need to think of the one person that can connect all of this together. I don't even need to do this. I know it's Kari Bear Alberic. Born into abject sorrow... He shall now become the Loom of Fate. Submit conclusion. I'm not even interpreting the others. You're... Kari Bear Alberic. Oh. You know me? That's quite the surprise. I don't believe I've met you before. Well, I've met you before, and you were a Hillichurl, and you killed yourself. It was crazy. It was probably the craziest scene I've ever seen in Genshin Impact. How you been? Oh, I see. It was the memory, wasn't what? it? What?! Your sibling's memory. You saw... the me from back then. Does that mean that he was healed somehow and became a human again? That's fascinating. How did that happen? This is Atosa's memory. I came here to say goodbye to her, but I suppose I'll just leave her a message instead. Come, let's find somewhere else to talk. What did we just- did he just take- oh my god! Is this message for us or for Atosa? Whoa. Is this Erminsul? It looks like Erminsul, just the wrong colors. Wow. First of all, I just want to look around and appreciate how beautiful this is. This is stunning. See, for as many complaints as I have about Genshin Impact, I have just as many compliments about the world design. It's beautiful. <laughs> What is this place? I suppose you could call it the realm of my consciousness. Oh, it's his own little Ermansol, I get no it. no longer exists in the real world, after all. 
as you well know. You look quite exhausted. Uh, it's nothing. I still have enough strength to play the part of a good host. I've always hoped that I'd get the chance to talk to you like this. And now, the time has finally arrived. This is a rare opportunity for me as well. I should try to learn as much information from Kari Bear as I can. Uh, what exactly happened to you? Extreme sorrow and pain. Hope and regret coursing through your veins. And a degree of abyssal power that defies comprehension. Father told me that once I possessed all those elements, I would become the loom of fate. Whoa. Freaky. So they really don't need Osile. Osile was, they were right. Osile was a test. He was a backup plan. But despite his intentions for me, I never truly became the loom of fate. I was merely used as a means for its construction. Harry Bear, did you even want to be the loom of fate? In truth, I died the moment I set everything in motion. The person you see before you now is nothing but a remnant of consciousness left over within the Loom of Fate. Ari Bear is dead. That's why he no longer exists outside of people's memories. As for your question, the Loom of Fate is a device capable of weaving ley lines. Weaving ley lines. Changing fate. In its primitive form. And changing memories. It can only be used to create and implant memories. But... As more of it is completed, its power becomes stronger and stronger, until finally, it has the power to weave real ley lines of its own. Once fully completed, the moment it gains the power to weave ley lines, it loses the lower level ability to influence memories. But it also becomes a tool that can change the entire world. I was right. So that was the source of your ability to implant memories? Yes. I have the ability to control the loom in its semi-completed form. I suppose you can think of it as a form of compensation. After all, its existence cost me my life. So the memories that suddenly appeared in Dane's mind were implanted by Kari Bear through the half-finished loom of fate. That makes sense, but I'm still lost as to why he went so far as to introduce himself to all the residents of Bimara Village. Ah, that. I was wrong to implant those memories. I'm sorry I caused so much trouble. Not only for everyone in the village, but for you as well. I just... wanted them to feel like I once existed in this world. As if... I had a chance at life. Wow, that's really sad, man. And it makes me feel, like, partially relieved to know that the person that they were using for the Loom of Fate was, like, a nice person and not malicious and not trying to kill everybody into that. And he actually wanted to be friends with people. So that's why I would have never guessed. But is there any kind of meaning to this? Does only existing people's memories really count as living? <laughs> I know what you must be thinking. Why would I do something so meaningless? <sighs> but I just, I just couldn't accept it. That's so real, man. I had to know what it would be like if I had my own life. What kind of person I would be. What other people would think of me. Chief Amadea, Baram, Granny Jahiat, Atosa. What would it be like if I could live alongside them? No cataclysm, no curse. Just a quiet life in a peaceful village. I was curious, so I selfishly tried to have my own life. Dude, this is so sad. I hate this. <laughs> I hate this. Genshin, you make me cry. Even if... Even if that meant piecing together the version of myself that could have been... One memory at a time. I know it sounds stupid. <laughs> After all, my life ended a long time Aww. ago. Any chance at living was stripped away from me when I was eight years old. My consciousness left to mature in an illusory world of nothingness. Interesting, so you age in your own consciousness even after you've died. 
And yet, so he died when he was eight years old. They said he was 20 years old in Vimara Village, so that would imply 12 years have passed. But the memories we saw in the Kari Bear quest were from, I believe it was 400 years ago. So what what is this? I guess that detail doesn't matter. Even the form you see before you was nothing but an invention based on my okay. father's appearance. there we go. An imagined version of what I would look like if I had the chance to grow up. In the end, this all stems from the tragedy that occurred in Conria back then. I feel like everything stems from the tragedy that occurred in Conria back then. Everyone is looking for you. I know. But there's nothing I can do to make them find me. If I could exist in the real world, I would return without a second thought and surprise them with the suddenness of it all. But, well, that's not possible for me. I understand it. Your existence was a great comfort to them. Uh, they all believe you once lived among them. I know. Dane might still need my help. Captain Danesliff? Twilight Sword, you mean? Uh, no need to meet up with him. Things should already be settled on settled. his end. Settled? He's like reading my mind. What is going on? Exactly. As someone who could only exist in people's memories, the fact that I'm able to talk to you in my consciousness like this can only mean one thing. The loom of fate has already been completed. Oh no. <laughs> oh man. What? The Loom of Fate is already complete? That means the Eye of the First Field Tiller must have fallen into the hands of the Abyss. Could something have happened to Dane? <sighs> See, I've been saying this for three years. That the Abyss Order is going to get the First Field Tiller's Eye because of Dane's leave. Do I think he gave it to them? Maybe. Because when he brought us there to go find it, did you guys see it anywhere? I certainly did not. And it's not like they could have gotten there before him, because they needed him to lead them to it. That makes me think that he was lying to me and he gave it to them already. Dainsleaf. I'm still gonna go save him. No need to worry about Captain Dainsleaf. He's absolutely fine. The only reason he lost the eye was because I happened to guess exactly what he oh, was planning. well what was he planning? Captain Dainsleaf has had the eye inside <gasps> his body this whole time, hasn't he? Oh my god. Yikes. Okay, well, I mean, I did say you should probably keep it on him at all times. His plan was to lure the Abyss Order to a false location, capitalizing on their pursuit of the Eye in order to have the chance to confront the Prince. He would then hand the Eye to you and tell you to take it away from that location. That way, Captain Dainsleff could accomplish his own goal and ensure the safety of the Eye all at once. A very thorough plan. But Dainsleaf never handed me the eye. I don't trust any of you people! That's right. Because in his mind, he had given it to you already. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Fine. Okay, fine. Does that mean he gave Dane a false memory? You made him think that? When? Before you two entered that false location. Okay, so maybe Kari Bear's, like, not a friend. <laughs> Traveler, wait. Hmm? We've no time to lose. Let's head inside. So when Dane froze up back then, it was because a false memory was being implanted in his mind. No wonder. That was when I implanted the memory of him handing you the eye. Given the tense situation at that time, Captain Dainsleff failed to notice anything out of the ordinary and took that memory to be real. I'm sorry, Traveler, but I needed the Loom of Fate to be completed. And to do that, we had to retrieve the eye. Wow. This is rough, because on, like, on one hand, I'm mad at him for doing this, not only to Dainsleaf and to me, but to all of Tivat, putting everyone in danger. And then on the other hand, he needs the Loom of Fate to exist and just have like a normal life. So I almost feel bad for him in a way, but not bad enough to let my anger go. I'm still mad at this guy. <laughs> So Dane had the eye this whole time until the Abyss Order took it away. I'm not sure there's anything we could have done. 
Now that the Loom of Fate is complete, what are you planning on doing with it? I promise I'm not trying to conceal anything from you. But I truly have no idea what the prince is planning. Then why would you... Then why would you do this? Do you not know what you've done? Tavat's ley line system is deeply entrenched in the planet. Creating new ley lines can neither replace nor extend the ones that already exist. In the face of everything they could be planning, I fear I'm too insignificant to even get a glimpse of the bigger picture. In any case, I had my own use for the Loom of Fate, and my goal, at least, has been achieved. Your goal? You remember my father, don't you? Clotar Alberic. I believe you saw him in your sibling's memory. How could I forget? That guy was terrifying. After he used the power of the Abyss to restore consciousness to my hilly churl form, I suffered from an indescribable level of mental anguish. To comfort me, my father told me a story that this was a fairy tale world where I had to take on the form of a little monster. That story managed to dispel my fears. Even if just for a moment. My goal was simple. To use the loom of fate in its near-completed form. When its ability to create memories was at its strongest. To implant a specific memory into the minds of the Hillichurls. In that memory, I would tell them a story. Just like my father did for me. It was a story of fairy tales and love. But, more than anything, it was the story of us. So the thing that caused the Hillichurls to calm down back then was Kari Bear's story. That was his goal. That was the only thing he wanted. That's so interesting to me. And now I'm starting to realize that a lot of the Dainsleaf quests have had a focus on humanizing Hillichurls in a way. In the Chasm one, we saw them like marching towards this thing that was supposed to save them. And then we just see them just sitting there dying. And it was the first time that we really saw Hillichurls as like conscious beings capable of complex emotions. And then of course, in the Kari Bear quest, that was a whole thing. And this again, it's all adding up to, you know, Conrians are the victim. But at the same time, we had this conversation earlier about the five sinners of Conria and how they like almost doomed their own people by refusing to help them. So Conria was like almost its own undoing in a way. He had a device as powerful as the Loom of Fate at his disposal, and all he wanted to do with it was to offer the Hillichurls a moment of comfort and peace. I can't change the world. Not when I lost the very right to exist within it. Implanting those memories, that was the most worthwhile thing I could offer. I think it was very meaningful indeed. All that's left of my existence is a wisp of residual consciousness tied to the Loom of Fate. In truth, that trace of my consciousness should have dissipated long ago. My goal was the one thing that allowed me to hold on all this time. But now, the bedtime story is finished. And it's finally time to rest. Wow. This is, this is devastating. <laughs> this is so sad. He's gonna die for the second time. Goodbye, Kari Bear. You were a great character. I was too late to see Kari Ether. Bear one last time. Wow. Oh my god, I was not expecting this. <sighs> K 
Kari Bear's consciousness is gone, and this space will soon disappear along with it. Neither of us belongs here. That's why we're not tangible. Were that not the case, I'd love to hug you too. Oh, oh my god, I just teared up. I'm gonna well, cry. How about a conversation? <gasps> Finally, I can ask Ether some questions, please. Please let me. The chance to just stop and talk like this is certainly not easy to come by. Wouldn't you agree? I should have expected this based on the promotional art for this quest. I almost can't believe it's real. That battle earlier was tough. The one against Dane, I mean. I didn't expect that after everything, he would still hesitate to raise his sword against That's me. That's exactly what I said. I said I don't think Dainsleaf is going to want to fight either. Were it not for that, perhaps I'd still be no match for the Twilight Sword. Even after 500 years. What exactly are you planning? The Loom of Fate, huh? I still haven't found a way to utilize it to its full potential. But there's still time before the Heavenly Principles awaken. The Heavenly Principles are still asleep? That would explain a lot, actually. That would explain why people are getting away with so much right now. The Heavenly Principles are tired after the Cataclysm. They had to take a big nap and they're going to come back soon. Yes. For 500 years now, ever since the Cataclysm in Conria, there's been no sign of activity. Not long ago, you witnessed the Hydro Archon destroy her divine throne, yes? Yeah, that was a crazy moment. Such a flagrant disregard for the rules, and still Celestia took no action. I suppose that's proof enough of the Heavenly Principle situation. Hmm, that's a good point from Aether. I'm always so concerned about Celestia meddling, but if they're not doing anything right now, then I don't know. I definitely think they're going to wake up at some point, and I definitely think they're not going to be happy with the Archons and everything they've done throughout the course of the entire game. However, the Heavenly Principles will awaken. We just don't know when that will be, or what might trigger it. You really hate the Heavenly Principles, don't you? You could say that. I mean, don't we all? Just look at Kari Bear. He was so pure and single-minded. The space we now find ourselves is a perfect representation of who he was. Quiet and peaceful, even as a hilly churl. Seeing the terrible sight within the mirror wasn't enough to taint his spirit. He brought comfort to the people of this world even though he was denied the very right to be a part of it. So ask yourself this. Who was it that deprived him of that right to exist? Of course, that's only one example. My feelings about the heavenly principles are too complicated to explain in just a few words. <sighs> Lumine? You're the only one in this world who calls me that. I was just gonna bring that up. I always love it when they have these scenes with the two of them together and Aether calls her Lumine. Or if you play with the other Traveler, uh, Lumine will call you Aether. There's so much I wanted to ask you. But... For some Lumine, reason, are you kidding? I'm not interested in asking those questions right now. I was specifically excited to ask questions. There's just one thing I have to ask. One thing I could never understand. Why? Why can't we continue our journey together? Yeah, that's the best question. <laughs> the parallel is crazy. I don't know. I'm trying to come up with an answer for that myself. They're just not meant to. I don't know. At the end of my journey, I arrived at a place known as the Sea of Flowers at the end. Oh my god, from, from Travail! In the original trailer for Genshin Impact that was released like when the game came out, 
there is a scene at the end of it where the travelers are standing in this sea of flowers. Do you remember? A long time ago, when we traveled between worlds together, you told me you wanted to find a place in the universe where that one flower was in full bloom. To have a place like that suddenly appear before me? Well, would you think of that as a coincidence? I have no clue what he means by that. Y you mean? I miss you too, Lumine. Oh, this is so sad. But as this war continues to rage, and as I continue to seek that final answer, I don't even know how to face myself sometimes. Let alone my own sister. <sighs> What's going on? This space has lost its tether. I doubt it'll be able to exist much longer. In fact, aside from our ability to physically interact with each other, there's something else you should know about this Oh, how space. convenient. With Kari Bear gone, we won't be able to remember anything that happened here. But I will. I'll remember everything that happened here. Everything in this space will be wiped from existence. Including all memory of our reunion. You're only telling me this now? That was kind of scary for Genshin, I feel. <laughs> that was very analog horror-esque to me. With the music being like that. What a powerful scene. So sleepy. Paimon's head feels all fuzzy. Oh, Paimon woke up a little earlier than you, so Paimon will fill you in. The villagers said that they saw us sleeping near the village yesterday. They couldn't wake us up no matter how hard they tried, so they decided to just bring us back here. Oh, and Dane came by just now? It looked like he was injured. That's not good. He didn't say anything, though. Just make sure that you were alright and left. Kinda seemed like he had a lot on his mind, but that's Dane for you. He never changes, does he? Hmm. Let's think for a second. We were in that memory, and we saw that guy you called Curry Bear. He was the missing villager that we've been trying to find, right? And after that, uh, Paimon doesn't remember what happened. He told me about the Loom of Fate. Wait, really? What a score! I guess our commission is complete then. The missing villager, the person who only existed in people's memories, was Kari Bear all along. But now that he's gone, I'm not sure how to explain things to the villagers. I think just don't explain, honestly. Just say you couldn't find him. Well, what happened after that? She's gonna be like, I don't know. Yep, I can't seem to remember. I do. Maybe I'm just tired? I feel like something else happened, but why can't I remember? I'm not sure why, but it almost feels like I lost something. Ah, there you are. <laughs> Sleep well? Bayram, you sure seem happy. Did something good happen? Something good? Huh. Wasn't anything good or bad, I'd say. It's just that, well, the village organized another search party Oh, yesterday. no. It didn't feel right to leave all the searching to the adventurers. They're looking for a dead guy. A dead guy who has been erased. <laughs> this is gonna consume these people. So there we were, searching away, when suddenly this one guy said it all came back to him. According to him, one day around dusk, he was passing by this one tree outside the village, and he saw our missing villager. There he was, sleeping under that tree all by himself. His parents came a little later to wake him up, and they all left together. They looked like quite a happy family, apparently. And after that, well, we all started to feel like that really is what happened. Kind of strange that we forgot all about it for so long. So that's how Kari Bear said his goodbyes. That was the last memory he gave them. Oh, and we also remembered his name, Kari Bear. Now, that's not a name you hear every day. Would have been helpful if we remembered it sooner. I'm glad they remembered his name. Make sure you remember it this time. 
Well, I hope he's happy wherever he is. Oh, I'm gonna cry. I'm relieved now that we know what happened. I like almost cried playing the actual Kari Bear quest, and now that we really see him and get to know him, it just makes me even more emotional. Like I'm actually like, there's tears in my eyes right now. Seems like everyone thinks Kari Bear left the village. That's probably for the best. At least they have some sort of explanation now. And no one else will try to change the villagers' memories for now. How a toast is Probably doing. not good. Maybe we should go check on her. If she hasn't remembered like everyone else, we can tell her what happened. Hyman didn't see her in the village just now, so she's probably at the tree. Come on, let's go talk to her. Man, how am I supposed to explain this to her? Hey, girly, your your best and only friend was a lie. I'm really sorry about this. What do I what do I say? <laughs> Oh, it's you two. I was just about to go looking for you. I wanted to thank you. I was part of the search party, so I... remember what happened to Kari Bear now. Honestly, I just... can't believe I forgot something so important. I'm sure he wouldn't want you to forget him. It's funny, but... I have this feeling he told me the same thing. I just can't seem to remember when. I guess it doesn't really matter anyway. Life is made up of a series of memories. As long as I hold on to our time together, he'll always be a part of my life. That's so true, Miss Girl. I'm just happy I got to meet him. So, who cares what happens in the future, right? Well, I mean, we should be a little bit concerned about the future. This whole quest has alarmed me significantly in terms of the Abyss Order and their plans. But of course she doesn't need to know about that. She can live her life. <sighs> okay, I'll admit. I'm just putting on a brave face. I was dumped, Aww. wasn't I? <laughs> no, actually. Otherwise, why would he just leave like that without saying goodbye? I'm sure he had his reasons. <laughs> like being dead. You don't need to comfort me. I'll be okay. Aw, I feel bad for her. I wish I could explain the situation to her, but she wouldn't even understand it if I tried. It's just like Kari Bear said. It's the things we overcome that make life more precious. And you know, if he has a heart, Maybe he'll come back and see me one oh day. Oh my god, this is- I said this already, this is devastating! Anyway, thanks for all your hard work, you two. I promised I'd help Granny Jahiet with something, so I should head back. Goodbye! Well, that should be it, right? Everyone's lives can go back to normal now. Oh, right! Weren't you about to tell Paimon what happened after your conversation with Kari Bear? Right. What was it that happened? I can't remember. Huh. It feels like there's something in my pocket. Uh, a picture? Where'd that come from? Let Paimon Oh my see. god, is it gonna be the promo art? No! Oh my god, this is so... I'm gonna cry. I'm actually crying. You must get along with each other, the two of you. I've been complaining so much lately about the writing in Genshin Impact. I've been saying it's too wordy, it goes on for too long, it's redundant, it's boring, it's irrelevant. But these types of quests are what make me keep coming back and keep loving this game and loving the story of this game. This is the kind of stuff that I play Genshin Impact for. That was an amazing quest. I loved that quest. Um, I'm gonna sit and think about all of that for the next 72 hours and maybe i can formulate some kind of theory or lore video about this but honestly i don't know if there's much more that needs to be said i feel like it was all wrapped up pretty well i keep saying this but i have a video that's really long that should be coming out soon i'm actually getting close to done with it which is exciting i was in the hospital yesterday though so you know i've been having some things that i have to deal with that are precluding me from working on videos but i promise 
they were coming. Thank you so much for watching this. I know this has probably been a very long video, so thank you so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.